Hi everyone, this is Intro Stats with Matt Show. Today we're talking about two population confidence intervals. So let's begin today's lesson. Um, last time we talked about uh, one population confidence interval, which was two numbers that we think a population parameter is in between. But today we're moving into two population confidence intervals. So, and this is a little different. A lot of people find this more complicated than the one population, and it's important that you get the idea of it. So this lesson is really just about developing the idea behind two population confidence intervals. So let's start with definitions. Uh, two population confidence interval are two numbers that we think the difference between the population parameters is in between. Now that's a very important definition that this, this confidence interval is actually measuring a difference. It's not measuring population one. It's not measuring population two. It's measuring the difference between them. Now the key word here is difference, right? So difference. The difference, think of it as the answer to a subtraction problem. So in two population confidence intervals, again, it's not really measuring population one. It's not measuring population two. It's trying to see how different they are. Which group is higher and how much higher, okay? So we got to explore differences a little bit just so you understand. So it helps me to kind of think about it in terms of something easy, like arithmetic. So, um, so if you look at this first example, 17 minus 5 is positive 12. So when you subtract two numbers and you get a positive answer, right, a positive difference, what does that really tell you? A lot of people don't think about it. But really, this is telling me that the 17, the first number, is actually 12 units higher than the second number. The answer to a subtraction problem actually tells you how much higher the first number is than the second. And that's a very big idea that we're going to come use when we get to two population confidence intervals here. So let me write this down. So a, di a positive difference tells me that the first number, 17, is 12 units larger than the second number. Second number was five, all right? Now keep that idea in your head, all right? Now, what happens if I subtract two numbers and the answer comes out negative? Okay, I'll give you an example. Eight minus 14 is negative six, right? What is that actually telling us? A lot of people don't think about it. A negative difference actually tells you that the first number is this amount smaller than the second number. So this is telling me that the 8 is actually 6 units smaller than the 14. Notice I didn't say negative 6 units smaller. The negative tells me it's smaller. Okay, so if you think about how differences work, this is sort of the big idea of today. How do differences work? So in this case, this negative 6 difference tells me that the first number, right, which was 8, is 6 units smaller than the second number, which was 14. Okay? See the key word, smaller, larger. Right? Positive difference, the first number is larger than the second. A negative difference, the first number is smaller than the, than the second. All right, now, what about if the difference was zero? Right? Seems to make sense, right? If I add 9 minus 9 is zero, what does that tell me? Well, when the, when the difference is zero, it tells you the two numbers are the same, right? So the first number is the same as the second number. All right? The first number is the same as the second number. All right, now how does these apply to two population confidence intervals? Now, we learned last time, again, that two a confidence interval in general is not to be thought of as two numbers. It's to be thought of as millions of numbers in between them. Okay, so you're not talking about two numbers here. This is not population one. That is not population two. We see this as millions of numbers in between. Remember last time we were talking about this? This is called interval notation. So if I have a 95% confidence level, two population mean confidence interval, I'm trying to find the difference between population, the mean of population 1 and the mean of population 2. Okay? And it tells me the difference is in between these two numbers. Some people will even write that sentence. They'll say, I'm 95% confident that the population mean difference 
you know, the mean be, or the difference between the population means is in between 17.3 kilograms and 29.8 kilograms. For me, that's not enough. I want my students to know this better than just saying the differences between these two. That is true. You get the that is a correct sentence. But what I really want you to get at is what are the signs of these numbers? Look at this number line below here. If you notice, aren't all the millions of numbers between 17.3 and 29.8 on the number line, aren't those all positive? Like, isn't all this positive? Positive, 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 positive. It is, right? So, that tells us that we know the difference is positive. So I know that population 1 minus population 2 is a positive answer. Let's go back to here. If our difference is positive, doesn't that tell us that the first is larger than the second? And the answer is telling me how much larger. This is the answer to the subtraction problem. So, I'm 95% confident, or we are 95% confident, that the mean for, or should I say population mean, for population 1 is between 17.3 kilograms and 29.8 kilograms larger than the population mean for population 2. So in other words, again, because both numbers were positive and all the millions of numbers are positive, I know the difference is positive, which is telling me population 1 actually is higher than population 2. And it's telling me it's between these two numbers higher. I don't know how exactly how much, because this just came from sample data. But I do know it's between these two numbers higher. Okay? Let's look at another one. So in this time, we got a 99% confidence level. I got a two population proportion confidence interval. Now we're talking percentages, right? Proportions, remember the decimal equivalent of percentages. Notice how both numbers came out negative this time. So I got a negative 0.057 and a negative 0.021. Okay, now let's think about this for a second. Again, don't think of 0.057 as population 1 and 0.021 is not population 2. That's not how this works. Remember, this is millions of numbers in between, and the difference could be any of them, okay? So keep that in mind. Students always do this on a test. They always tell me this is group one and this is group two, and they always mess it up, okay? That's not how this works. The key with this is the millions of numbers in between on the number line are all negative. Do you notice that? See, here's zero. These are all negative numbers. That means all of these are negative. So I got a negative, 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 right? So this is a negative, 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 all the millions of numbers in between. I'm going to go ahead and put these in blue so we can see it better. All right, so we got negative numbers. That means the answer to the subtraction problem, population 1 minus population 2, has to be a negative number. Now let's go back. What did we say? When the difference is negative, we know the first is smaller than the second, right? And the answer is telling us how much smaller. That's what this is telling us. This is telling us population 1 is actually smaller than population 2. In fact, it's between these two numbers smaller. Now, just like up here when we said that the negative 6 answer tells us it's 6 units smaller, you don't really have to put the negatives. The negatives are just telling me it's smaller. All right, so how would we write the sentence? We'd say we are... 99% confident that the population proportion for population 1 is between these two numbers. Now you could say proportion and just write 0 0.021 and 0 0.057 or you could turn it into a percentage if you want. I always prefer to turn it into a percentage. So let's do that. People usually don't understand when I say proportion to them, especially people out in the world. You say, well, the portions between 0 0.021 and 0 0.057, and they always look at you funny, like, I don't even know what you're talking about right now. I always turn it into a percentage. So I'm going to say population percentage for population 1 is between these two numbers. So 2.1% and 5.7%, what? Difference is negative, smaller, right? Or less than 
the population percentage for population two. Now this will make a lot more sense once we start getting into real examples and we see what population one and population two are. Today is just about the theory. What's the idea? All right, let's go to this one. Last example. 90% confidence interval, two population mean confidence interval. This time it's dollars. I'm comparing two populations and some kind of money. And I see that the confidence interval came out negative positive. Negative positive. The left unit of the lower limit is negative $52.30. The upper limit is $41.91, okay? Again, it's all about the signs. Again, that's not group one, that's not population one, that's not population two, that's not how this works. Again, there's millions of numbers in between. The population difference could be any of the millions of numbers. All right, here's the key. Look at the number line. Don't I have some lots and lots, millions, in fact, of negative numbers in this confidence interval? So I got negative numbers here. These are all negative. Don't I also have millions of positive numbers in this confidence interval? Uh-huh. Hmm. So it could be population one is smaller than population two. It could be population one is bigger than population two. This is the I don't know, right? I can't tell. But if you notice right here, there's a key. Zero's in the interval. What did we say when the difference was zero? That tells us the two numbers are what? The same, right? The same. So. This is actually telling us that the population one and population two are not significantly different. Now, I can't be sure they're exactly the same, but I can say they're not really significantly different. We can't really tell. The populations are so close. When you get a negative positive confidence interval, that's telling you your populations are so close, you cannot tell which one's bigger. And that happens a lot in real life. Sometimes we just can't tell. When you're talking about 100 million people, you might not be able to tell which population is bigger than another. So what we usually say is this. We are 90% confident that there is no significant difference between the population means for population one.